Hi YouTube. We're here today to talk about a new plane I'm working on. And when I say new, I mean old. This is a single wing from the plane I'm going to be working on. Just to give you some idea of scope and size, I'm going to use this thing. It's called a measuring tape. One wing measures out to 58 and three quarters. That's really long, guys. So basically, this plane was built by my grandpa a while back, and he had given it to me when they moved from a house in the country to a house in town, and they needed to make some room, and this was one of the casualties of that move for them. And what we've got here is a, I believe it's called a polyhedral wing, and this is on a plane that's very popular, been for a long time. It's called the Bird of Time. Now this particular model is huge, as you can imagine. Um, got a steel, solid steel rod in the middle. These are also wood wings. Uh, my grandpa builds these things. They're not ARFs. He builds them from scratch. Um, well, not from scratch. He builds them as a kit. There's a stop in there. And then they go together like so. And when I see those wings to go together, I get all excited about doing wingerons. And then I remind myself that I'm probably not going to do wingerons because, good lord, this thing is so huge, I can't even hardly walk around it in my shop. And my shop is not dinky. Um, so that's the, that's the wings, what you can see of them. And then this is what the this is what the fuselage, and it's got a full functioning horizontal stabilizer slash elevator, and then a very sizable rudder, and it's got some uh, scrape pads here to protect the rudder because you don't want the rudder to hit the ground on landing, and then it's got a high launch high start uh, cable there. My grandpa used a couple of Futaba. S304 or 3004, S3004 servos. Uh, he has a switch in here and then he has the old uh, configuration back before they went to uh, crystalless radios like what we're using these days. And I am actually went out today and I bought myself an iron and I'll probably be taking off this Dynaflight label. You'll notice it's actually printed in the USA, which is upside down because you're supposed to put this on upside down, I guess, which is really stupid. But it was the thing to do in the day, I guess. But at any rate, my goals and objectives here in this video are to give you the quick rundown on what to be looking forward to. I'm going to be in the process of figuring out if the amount of play if the construction is going to be commensurate to a flying success or if it's going to be a flying failure. And that's going to help me determine whether or not I go through the trouble of figuring out if I'm going to be doing some wingerons. Look how huge that thing is, guys. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. And now that we've already measured it with the measuring tape halfway, why don't we measure all the way? And I can tell you it's 117 inches. And that's because it's three inches shy of 10 feet. And I'm just going to lay the tape down in here and it measures out to almost exactly 117. Um, I do not know if that's the correct length, but that's what I have. Now this is a pure glider, guys. It doesn't have a motor. Um, if only I had a slope, I could slope soar it. My plans are pretty simple for this. For today, my goals are to get it to a state where I can fly it. I'm going to use this DSM-2 uh, receiver. This is an AR-500, which would be a five-channel receiver. I've got two ideas for motors. This is a Volantix motor. It's a B4023, 850 kV motor came out of my ASW28, which is a similar size plane, a little bit smaller, uh, 2560 millimeters. 
And then I also have this other choice, which is a BL15 uh, brushless outrunner motor. It's 850 kV uh, EFLM4115. Both potential good candidates. If we power it, I've got myself a 12-8 prop here. This is an electric folding prop made by Master Air Screw. This all comes in as an assembly. You can take the spinner off and then you use a nut to actually mount this down. So it'd be a good candidate if I use this um, motor. But mounting this motor, I'm going to have to have it mounted the other way. There's going to be some complexity. Um, but the other thing is I might just mount the motor on the front of this thing and let it air cool. There's a tag for that. And then I've got a little 2200 milliamp as a, an example. This is a non-good battery. I'm just going to use it for testing. Probably fly it on a 2200 3S. And then, of course, we've got the lid here, which is held down by a little bit of rubber band tension. And that will go up here to cover the hatch and then hold the front of the wings down. And then some rubber bands that will actually go in the middle. And they're supposed to hold down the wing, but the only issue I have with that is that if we have a center mount wing, um, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to hold down. It may work great. It may not work great. Oh, and then uh, my initial choice is an Aerostar RVS 40 amp brushless ESC with a 3 amp BEC that's capable of running two through four, running on two through four S lipos. Um, I believe this also has a reversing function, which is not, I mean, obviously we're not going to use a reversing function. We'll use braking uh, if we go ahead and do it. But my hope is to kind of turn this pile, less the motors for now, into an operational, full functioning sailplane. We'll get it up in the air, we'll test it, see if the thing even flies, see if I have to do a rebuild on this. This, this doesn't seem right to me. Uh, it could it could be perfect. It could be all totally screwed up. Um, my grandpa at the time was building these things, and we were not converting them over to electronic. We were just building them, um, and and then they never flew. So he didn't realize there were some things that were maybe not being done right. Uh, he's since come a long way. He's doing a great job, and um, I've been able to help some. And he's just doing a really good job. He can build the frames just fine, but um, when it comes to the electronics, I help him out a lot. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is I'll probably just go ahead and plop all this electronic stuff in here. Just get her bound up to my receiver. It's going to be a two-channel system right now, just the elevator and rudder. Uh, so obviously we we're going to have an extra channel for throttle. We're going to have an extra channel for air brake left, air brake right, or aileron left, aileron right, or ailerons, flaps, or spoiler right, spoiler left. You get the idea. We're going to have two channels for some other accessories. Obviously, we're not going to put landing gear on this. I'm um, not going to be doing differential thrusts, nothing fancy like that. We're just basically going to be doing a simple sailplane. So that's the rationale behind this. Plus, this has the longer antenna, uh, so I can get one that may pass out of the frame because this thing could get up there. Um, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see how that how it performs. This thing will definitely thermal. Um, I have heard that these things get heavy when you start adding all the electronics, which I can imagine that would be true, but we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, guys, keep tuned in, and this is coming up. Um, I would love to show you guys a flight video even yet this afternoon if it works out. So thanks for watching, and we'll pause it, and we'll bring you right back when we get some things put together.